Let's bring out the people that you are here to see, the cast of the longest running superhero TV series of all time, everybody, Smallville. First up, from professionals, Lucifer, Draft Day, Cheaper by the Dozen, The Fog, Judging Amy. He is Clark Kett. He is Cal L. He is The Blur. He is Superman. Please welcome first to the stage, Tom Welling. Hey, guys. Tom. <laughs> I am by the button again. You did Thanks great, Thanks for Tom. being here. Uh, Mike, you forgot about Cheaper by the Dozen 2, which is what I think. That's a very, uh, that's a very good point. <laughs> I would have preferred you didn't mention the fog, so thanks for that. <laughs> All right, so next time, swap out uh, Super by the Dozen 2 with the fog. All right, makes sense, Thank makes you. sense. I also went in reverse order, weirdly, um, <laughs> chrono chronologically. You know what's funny, Tom? There was a fan, I can't remember who they was, I'll have to look it up, that was like, when is Super by the Buzzin, uh, Dozen 3 coming out? That was a real question that came in by a fan, so. I actually uh, have an idea for that. I wanted Charlie oh. Baker to uh, start his own family and the idea of that, like, oh, I've had, I have all these brothers and sisters. This isn't going to be a big deal. And then he has his first child and he can't handle it and everybody comes back. So I'm working on getting that made. All right. Nice. So that goes out to uh, E. Gremley, uh, 05, who wanted to know about Cheaper by the Buzz Dozen 3. So, hey, it worked out. All right. Let's keep the cast rolling out here. Um, you know her from Eurotrip, Edgemont, the Street Fighter, the Legend of Chung Lee, Beauty and the Beast, Burden of Truth. Um, please welcome Lana Lang, Kristen Crook, everybody. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Kristen, thank you so much for being here. That's uh, great so to good be to, here. Yeah, so good to have you. Uh, so let's, cozy you are. It what? Look cozy. It looks I'm, so cozy. I'm in, a, in an apartment in Winnipeg. <laughs> okay. It looks like a reasonable, uh, yeah, looks like a reasonable temperature with very soft light. It looks nice, Tom, you're right. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let's keep it going. Uh, from Sorority Bros. Boys, sorority boys breaking in. There's the BR. Impastor, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. He is the voice of Wally West from uh, the or the Flash from Justice League animated franchise. His current podcast is Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. But uh, we fell in love with him as Lex Luthor from Smallville. Let's bring out Michael Rosenbaum. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's the, yeah. Still got it. Still We're got done. it, baby. Oh man, if I had seen that you changed your name to DJ Sexy Lexia, I would have definitely <laughs> introduced you. You know what? That, but I missed it. Well, the uh, late Regis Philbin, when I was on his show years ago, he goes, remember this guy, Sexy Lexi. And I'll never forget <laughs> it. So, you know. That's so awesome. And what's that photo? You know, I've, I've actually personally seen that photo before. I know you were giving it out to some fans at some of our physical convention. But what is that <laughs> beautiful shirtless photo of? So of this is uh, Tom and I, I believe, like probably on the pilot or around the first season. And we took this picture and uh, Tom and I, when the convention start going, we do these things called Smallville nights that are pretty amazing. That are yeah. like uh, interaction with fans. It's like a private thing, no cameras. We do a lot of cool stuff. So that was a picture I gave to the people who attended. <laughs> One Very cool. As they go. Yeah. So. Very awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks for being here, Mike. All right. Let's keep it going. We're almost uh, halfway through here uh, with this amazing cast. Uh, you know, we're from <laughs> I, Me, Wed, from Wedding Planning oh, wow. Mystery, Saving Hope, Super. She returned back to the DC Universe uh, with her amazing role in the new Supergirl series. Uh, but first, we fell in love with her as Lois Lane. Please welcome Erica Durance, everyone. That's me, bloody Erica. Oh. Oh, she go? What happened to you? There you go. Wait, there go. she is. Hey, look at that. She's got a picture too. I love it. Is yeah. that why are you so bloody? What what scene uh, is that from? I got stabbed in the chest in my show. Mm. It was tough times. <laughs> and then I That's... became an angel for a while. Was that yeah. when you were a doctor? Yeah. Same oh. Right yeah, a scary patient. I came across him and he was sleeping. You're not supposed to wake up people that are sleeping, sleepwalking. <laughs> And he stabbed oh. you. And he, and he stabbed you. Yeah. You know, great episode. Linda. Great episode. Nice. Hi, everybody. <laughs> All right. Everyone from here on out has to have a picture ready. So I'm, I'm putting it out there now. <laughs> I felt stressed. I was like, yeah. I compete. No, I know. I know. Let's see if we can uh, keep it going. I, now I'm putting a lot of pressure on these next three. Um, you know, uh, this next actor from Instant Star, B. <laughs> Ted, Bitten, Jigsaw, um, V Wars. Uh, she also returned to the DC Universe in Supergirl, uh, but she was our original Supergirl in Smallville. Um, please give it up for Laura Vandervoort. I don't have a picture, but I have a bottle of water. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> Not an ad. <laughs> Not an ad, but would love more. 
Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> Mike, why do you start with the most random things we've done? Uh, you know, it's I know. because, I because was like, those... don't mention instant star. No, but that's the, those are the things that we people fell in love with you first and they oh, had their yeah. fandoms, you know what I mean? And yeah, we... I mean, met, I mean, what was a real, real winner. Especially some of those Canadian series, you know what I mean? A lot of those Canadian series are like huge cult hits still, you know, and mm-hmm. a lot of people watch those CTV shows still and they're coming back they around. Do. So it, it's fun to see yeah. the, the the legacy. If they're you actually they're actually discussing an instant star reunion right now, which yeah. is crazy. Really? Crazy. Yeah. Oh, there's like a, oh I'll do it. Michael yeah. Rosenbaum did Greece in high school. <laughs> what did I? Oh, fair. <laughs> Which character? <laughs> Uh, Vince Fontaine. He was <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? I was so scared shitless on that that I still remember my lines from that. That's it's crazy. Oh, it crazy. I did. Uh, I did Greece in high school too. You were the lead though, because you're like a hot, pretty. You know, you look like her, Olivia. Newton. I can't even see you. Oh, there you are. Yeah, swipe, swipe left. Yeah. I'm on a phone. I can't see everyone. I wasn't a lead. I, uh... <laughs> Vince Fontaine's a, an integral part, though. He's got that big scene there. It was mind. fun. It was definitely yeah. fun. <laughs> you know what's funny, though, real quick? And it just, I remember <laughs> it was my first play, and I remember I got to kiss this girl. She was really popular, Sharice Moore in high school. And she came up to me and she goes, I already talked to the director, and we're not going to kiss. And I go, <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Only reason you wanted the part, right? No. Just a rem- no, but I was like, oh my God, I got to kiss the popular girl, and that didn't happen. No. Just a reminder, we have other people to say hi to. We do have other people to yeah. say yeah. hi to. Right. Come Come on. On. Hi, Alan and Sam and Quinn. Thanks, Laura. Hi. Thanks, Laura. <laughs> Thanks. People are literally in the chat being like, bring out Aquaman now. So uh, before we get before we get to Aquaman, though, uh, we know uh, this next gentleman from Battlestar Galactica, being oh. human once upon a time, Riverdale, Supergirl. He is the voice of Starkiller. Emperor Palpatine, and of course, Darth Maul. He played Davis Bloom, the human incarnation of Doomsday. Let's give it up for Sam Whitwer, everyone. Hello. You know, I, I too had the experience of like in eighth grade doing like a play and there was some sort of kiss coming up and in front of everyone, the 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 female actress, go, eighth grade, goes, I don't have to kiss him, do I? In front of everyone. I'm like... <laughs> No, 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 I'm not gonna do it. Where's she right now? Where is she? <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. And it's anyway. at that point you decided to become a professional actor, right? I guess so. Yeah. I guess so. <laughs> guess that's what I'll do. Yeah. Where All they right. have to kiss you. They have no choice. No. no choice. They're getting Let's paid. do this. Let's do this. Last but not least, uh, he is Thad, everybody. We know him as Thad uh, from Blue Mountain State. I uh, was also yes. in the Hunger Games. He is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. He is currently a uh, hawk in Titans, uh, but he began as Aquaman in Smallville. Let's give it up for Alan Richie. Yes. Hey. Hey. <laughs> we should have gone backwards. This isn't fair at all. Nobody. Uh, Tom <laughs> is was supposed to get all the claps. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. We're tra- I got to tell you, when I saw you in Blue Mountain State, I was so jealous. I was like, I want to be on that show. I want to that show. <laughs> You wanted to swallow dildos every week on a... <laughs> I won a dildo swallowing contest between takes one time. It was great. Congratulations. I like, uh, I That's amazing. Like, I would like that girl that... Uh, that Sam and Michael had to kiss. I'd be like, I don't really have to do that, do I? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Uh, I like that. I won a dildo swallowing contest between takes as our opening uh, here for this whole panel. There it's you a go. Nice, it's We're a good all back start. together, small pill. It's a good start. It's a good start. Um, let's kick things off. We have uh, tons of fans watching from around the world. I want to shout out where everyone's watching from because it's super awesome. Uh, we've got folks watching from Vancouver, Sacramento, Beirut, Calgary, India, Paris, Australia. Uh, good morning, Australia, I think. Argentina, Brazil, Texas, Tennessee, Taiwan, Germany, India, uh, Indiana, I said already, Ohio, New Hampshire, the Philippines, Chile, Mexico. Wait, wait, the, come on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, wow. Germany, uh, to Iceland, Reykjavik, Iceland is in the house. Um, I get a lot of folks from Canada, Toronto, across the US, the UK. Um, there are fans watching from around the world. And I, I know I speak on behalf of all of them. And, you know, we, we hope to get to as many of these fan questions as possible. But I just want to say are, thank these you. Are all, these are all places that we go to. We can stay, right? We can stay with these people. Mm. <laughs> that's, a, that's a different. Yeah, around that's a the much, world friends. <laughs> that's a yep. much shorter list. That's a much shorter list, sadly. <laughs> uh, that's a, 
We can't even go to Canada, right? <laughs> um, Scott, we meaning uh, Americans can't go to Canada. Right? Um, You're not welcome. Yeah, no, don't, yeah. don't even, don't let us, please. Canada does <laughs> not want to kiss us. No. <laughs> well, there, you guys are doing something right. So, uh, yes, in yes, Canada, they're they're doing really well. So we got to figure out what they're doing. Yeah, and stay safe. I know a lot of um, Canada filming locations are going back to work, and I know some mm-hmm. of you are involved with that. So we we wish nothing but the best of health and safety to um, all of the folks. You know what I mean, from the crew to the directors to the actors that are going back. So um, yeah, stay safe, stay safe, stay healthy. We can wait. I, I know. I speak again on behalf of the fans. If if things need to stop and halt, we can wait. We won't wait for too long, but we can wait on the next series. Um, but my gosh, the fan the fan love is is amazing. The series ended almost uh, next year. It'll be uh, the twentieth anniversary. Crazy crazy of the pilot. Always hate and then, you say that. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. But it's, it's a segue. It's a segue into how popular it's like re-emerged and, and, and become, you know, it was, it ended obviously 10, almost 10 years ago, um, but then came on Netflix and like a whole new set of fans are discovering yeah. it. And I think this is super cute. I, normally, normally in Twitter, we, I just get tweets with the questions. This person, uh, Eldis at Eldis Damon was so excited uh, about this panel that they put it into like a beautiful form here, a uh, text form and said, I, this is my favorite series of all time. I have a lot of questions. I know you're not going to get to all of them, but here is a beautiful JPEG uh, with all of my questions on here. So, yeah. So shout out. Yeah. So shout out to Eldest Damon and Becky J- uh, Jacobson also asked a very similar question. So I, want, I just want to start uh, with his question number three. <laughs> uh, it's 2020 and Smallville is still at its highest peak when it comes to being the best superhero or the longest running superhero shows of all shows. What is one thing that even to this day you carry away with you as being part of this series? Um, Tom, why don't we start with you? You look like you look pensive. Um, um, and then, no, and then everyone can kind of jump in. Well, yeah. My first thought was um, the fact that I don't, I didn't take anything from it other like Michael did with taking everything he could get his hands on his three little fingers. But I think my takeaway is being able to do this. I mean, I haven't seen, mm-hmm. you know, Alan or Sam in years. Um, and the rest of us have been, been a, we've been doing a couple of these and it's fun to just reconnect. We're all feeling a little lonely during these times. And for me, I look forward to these. I mean, this is fun. We get to laugh. We all get along really well. So, I would say this. Tom is, Tom is, what he was referring to is like, no one else in the past took their, <laughs> like, I took my Lex jacket home and I took props and I, <laughs> I took things in Tom and Chris and most, most people didn't do that. But I was like, you know, I kind of want to do that. So you I took, did. Yeah. So you took, you literally took things from small. I physically yeah. took <laughs> things from the set. That's what I took. Back, from back. I mean, it was just, a, you know, it's like, you know, people always say, you know, especially in Hollywood, it's like, you know, what are, what is so-and-so doing now? Or what, if you, if you hit the lottery, what are chances you're going to hit the lottery again? You know? So to yeah, me, yeah. Smallville was a lottery. It's like you're, you're hitting, you're, you're on a huge show. It's all over the world. And um, even, you know, years later on Hulu, not Netflix, people are enjoying it and loving it. And new, a, a new audience is born from it. So well, especially for you, because it was like the first thing you ever did that was like good. <laughs> That's actually not true. <laughs> I did uh, a, a, a movie called Midnight in the Garden, Good, uh, good and Evil. But it was, oh, that's right. That's right. Didn't do well. Bomb. But I really liked my work in it. <laughs> anyway, it was fun. I loved I loved doing it. And it was, uh, you know, you, you make a lot of great friends and you learn a lot. And um, I'm, I'm just very lucky to be able to have a house. You know, it's like, what? I didn't think I'd ever have a house. <laughs> put all house. the stuff in that you stole. To put all the stuff in <laughs> With things that I stole from Smallville, yeah. <laughs> Michael, I, I do. I actually appreciate the correction. I don't know. Why. Yeah, it's all on Hulu, on Hulu right now. So I appreciate you uh, correcting That's me. That's all right. Yeah, yeah. Um, Kristen, Kristen, you know, yeah. obviously a, another long tenured uh, cast member of the show. Um, you know, so what, what, what's your biggest takeaway? It's weird. When you first ask the question, I think that really it was my early adulthood. You know, I, I was on the show from when I was 18 until my mid-ish 20s. Um, it's where I grew up. And so for me, the takeaway is this entire time of my life, like a fundamental foundational part of becoming who I am as a person. So it's kind of like in my, in my body and, and in everything that I do. Um, it, was, it was just such a huge part of existence for me. That's such a better answer than Michael and I have. 
<laughs> that was better than yours for sure <laughs> when you have to go the funny thing about these virtual panels is when you have to go one at a time it really like the people that are waiting longer like are really overthinking their answer the people that get to go first like oh i, I should have said that beforehand yes go to erica right now go to erica <laughs> erica, 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 <laughs> erica go 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 <laughs> uh, I mean, it really changed the course of my life to be honest like i i'm so outside this this world, I never really thought any of that could happen. And, and so for me, the whole idea of getting to join the cast and be part of it and, oh, I can do this maybe. And uh, so it, it changed what I thought was possible for me. And I made really good friends that I, you know. And Eric, I read something yeah. recently where it was that, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, that Lois was initially supposed to be, it was supposed to be a very small arc where she comes back to check on her cousin, uh, Chloe. And then it really expanded to um, the full season. Um, yeah, talk a little bit about that sort of just being there, you know, kind of up front. Well, obviously, people that know Superman and the Superman mythology know that Lois Lane is, a, is an important character. I'm just really uh, clingy. That... <laughs> <laughs> I'm clingy and needy. Um, uh, yeah, it, it was really cool. And it was just now, you know, it's like hindsight, right? You don't know when you're going through it. They're just going to like feed a couple more episodes at you. And then all of a sudden you look back and you're like, oh, they keep inviting me back. And so yeah. I just feel really lucky. And, and like I said, it was something that I'd always thought might be nice to do, but it was just nobody in my family does anything like this right so the idea of being an actor they're like what just go get a real job so it's really neat that um i ended up getting to do that and then launched other things that i wanted to experience and try to do and you know even in in life i got to travel places i never would have gone and, and do things i never would have gotten to do so what <laughs> at least michael, at least michael's least screen yeah. michael distracting from your answer i'm not doing was. anything michael, <laughs> hey, I'm in fairness, I'm rambling. It, you're, no, not. you're not. It was, it no. was wonderful. You're not. That was beautiful. My favorite yeah. is Whit look at Whitworth. He's like, what the hell? Why am I here? What am I doing? Get me out of this thing. Okay, that, <laughs> was, me, that was me on the Super Whitworth. Girl panel. Alan, by the way, real quick, Alan, you really look good. Can you email me what you're doing? No. Besides being oh, good looking. Does it really look good? Does it look that good? Yeah, it's it looks really good. How do, how do you do that? <laughs> You just hook up. A, I, I've got a Canon 5D. You just hook it up to the computer. All right, shit. All right, we'll go He's ahead. asking yeah, like how here. you like if you work out or something. <laughs> <laughs> I do thousands of push-ups a day. You're right, Erica. You're right. I wake up with a facial. Drinking and working out might help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I say that for myself. I don't well. drink. I just want to get out of that. No one drinks. And a really good canon. That's a that's a good life lessons. Uh, eat healthy, uh, don't work out, and have a really nice camera. Have a really nice camera. You look great, Alex. Oh. <laughs> um, Laura, talk a little bit about uh, coming in. Uh, for, really, for the rest, the remaining three of you, Laura, Sam, and Alan. Um, you all come in. You know, in the it's essentially the second half of the of the series, um, where we're portraying you know very popular characters from the comics, um, and had really cool stints as those characters. You know, talk a little bit about coming into what was already a hugely popular show. Uh, Laura, why don't we start with you with uh, taking on Supergirl and Kara? Oh, um, what was it like, or what did I steal? What did you take away? Yeah, what did, what did what have you taken away from the series, <laughs> either physically or? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think my answers are very similar to the ladies in that um, it it was. I mean, for myself personally, it was a, it was a learning ground for me to be on a set of that magnitude and, and to be on a series that had that sort of fan base because I had been on Canadian series before, like we talked about. But um, yeah, it, it was it was stressful, but I I think it really taught me quite a bit and. <laughs> It, they were incredible shoes to fill as Supergirl, um, but I, I got friendships out of it and I, I, I took a couple things. Um, and I think, like we had said before, these conventions have actually brought us closer together. I mean, I'm Al, Alan and I never worked together. I think we've met once. So it's a chance to also communicate with actors that you never really would have had a chance to. But I did take my cuff, my, my crypt, Krypton cuff. Yeah, awesome. So, Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. So other people took things. Other th people took things, Michael. He's right. Yes. <laughs> hey, I guess this is from other people's trailers and they don't know. But other than that. What? What did you <laughs> take from trailers? <laughs> Just Erica. Erica's got yeah. like a secret eBay account. <laughs> it's it's Smart. keeping me up, up afloat. 
Yeah, no, smart, smart. <laughs> well, and shout out to Jeff Fulkins who asked if they do you all keep in touch. You're all kind of like uh, answering that as we go along. Um, uh, Alan, uh, we've got Rachie Gurley in in the chat right now uh, saying uh, that you are the, the best Aquaman. Um, talk I, again, <laughs> such I, well, and so, such an interesting thing because uh, I think it was like four or five episodes that you did, but there were such big episodes. Justice, obviously, one of the like fan favorite episodes, and we could see sort of the building of what. Um, of that universe. And then, you know, again, Smallville, as, as people have always said, has ultimately led to what the Arrowverse is now. What was it like being part of that first kind of inception, if you will, of like TV superheroes and bringing them all together? Uh, yeah, it's always bizarre to me to hear um, people enjoy my Aquaman time on the show because it was my first, this was the first thing I ever did. Yeah. So I walked on a set completely clueless and I'm looking around trying to absorb as much as I can. And you know, you've got Rosenbaum like farting behind the desk during the scene. And I'm like, okay, farts are allowed. Farts are allowed. <laughs> and then Tom, you know, Tom, like he doesn't know this, but he, you know, he gave me a lot of really, uh, uh, you know, there was a lot of great teachable moments without him even trying, you know, about the industry and, you know, how to sort of, you know, a healthy perspective of the set and, a, and, a, and, and being on a show. And, um, but I, it was such a learning experience for me. It was, you know, it's, I feel like I blacked out for those episodes that I was <laughs> like, I don't remember yeah. much about that, you know? Um, I, re I remember cause, um, I directed the episode and I remember you did, yeah. you did this thing where you had, you had to walk out of the water, right? And I remember we were there um, off of Stanley Park, whatever it was, and you walked out of the water and I was just, and you kept walking and kept walking. And the first day he was like, Tom, Tom. And I'm like, oh, cut. I'm like, I'm walking, walking out of the water. Like I was enjoying this. Like he looked, looked like I was. Yeah. Yeah. You, you were good at, you're good at putting people's mind at ease. I, I remember I was, I didn't know. I started directing recently. And, um, and one thing that you said, I, I carried with me into that experience where you were directing. I'm like, man, how do you do that? Like, how do you know all this? And you were like, you know what? It, it, you're surrounded by people who know what they're doing. And so you just kind of wait. And then right then the DP goes, so what do you think? You know, I'm thinking like maybe a 35, you know, we could do like a 50. Hey, you know, I don't know. 35 sounds good to me. And you're like, uh-huh. And he walks up, good, 35. Okay, put on the 35. And he goes, see? Glenn Winter, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He goes, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it was it was an easy set, man, an easy set to be part of. And, and then, of course, you're coming in playing a character that people already seem to embrace. So it has nothing to do, you know, nothing to do with me <laughs> yeah. or my work. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Um, Sam, uh, obviously you get to come on and portray, you know, the, be uh, the, the show's all about beginnings, right? How all these characters begin, how they start, what they go through before they take on their like form that we all knew and recognized from the comic. And that's why we were so into it and engaged. <laughs> Same thing for Doomsday, obviously. We, we all know Doomsday from the comics. He kills Superman. We see him as the big, you know, kryptonite covered uh, monster. But you come in as this human iteration of him. Again, later, later on in the, in the series, uh, again, talk a little bit about approaching that character of Davis Bloom. <laughs> well, well, yeah, like no pressure. He's, he's doomsday. And, and I don't, yeah. you, you know, one of the, one of the funniest things is to, to try to go on set and, and menace Tom, you know, and I'm six one. I'm like, yeah, sure. Okay. I'll go. I've menaced people on television before I'll, I'll go and I'll pick on him. And then, and then I meet Tom and he's like six, four. So I'm like, Hey, I'm going to get you. I'm just going to beat you up. And, you know, it was very funny to, to have Tom towering over me in every scene where we were having a confrontation, which, which I, I got a kick out of. I will say, um, uh, speaking of what you take away from, from yeah. series and stuff, yeah. um, Tom was a, an awesome example of what you're supposed to do uh, as the lead of a, a series. Cause he showed up every day, chipper in a good mood we all have long days we've all worked on stuff before so you're like yeah he's in a good mood we're on a good mood it's great 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 but then then go on and do something where you're demanded to be in every scene every day and never have a day off yeah i didn't do as well as tom i was a moody son of a bitch where and i'm like wow how did tom welling do it god yeah i'm such a i'm, a, I'm disgraceful with my with my horrible mood and i i, I actually made Funny enough, I don't know if you remember this time. I made a joke uh, when we were doing our uh, group photos for the for the series for okay. the uh, you know for season eight, and everyone's getting together and looking all you know like you know taking pictures for you know for the show. And Tom was going to be in very briefly. They they 
staged us around and they would take all of our pictures and take ours. And then Tom was going to come in and they were going to take him separately and Photoshop him in. And I remember making some dumbass joke of like, oh man, what he, he's, you know, he's too good to come and do the photos with the rest of us and stuff like that. Some stupid joke. Right. <laughs> and, and, and people were like, and, and I remember people that joke didn't catch on. Like there were people who had been there for a while who were like, we're not going to go with this joke, what we're, you know? And I remember just being like, oh, okay, well, you know, and years later, <laughs> on, on a series where I was the lead, we were all taking a Saturday, which again, the, the part of the story is we did that photo shoot on a Saturday, right? Well, then years later, I'm on a show where we're taking a Saturday to do a photo shoot. And the actors who weren't there every day were making jokes for me at me for complaining to be there on a Saturday. And here I am like 16 hour days, haven't had a day off in months. And I'm just like, oh, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. And like, whatever, man, you should be grateful. You should be grateful. And I'm like, oh, this is my karmic payback for making fun of Tom Welling for <laughs> like, because Tom didn't get a day off. And like, what was it? I, I was told when you got on set that you took like two sick days and something like in eight and years, which is when I came I on. Had eight years. Two, two sick days in 10 years. Um, and I had ah. to go, I had to go. I had an opportunity, I think in season seven, to negotiate, I think it was five days off a year. Oh. Uh, other than that, I was on set every day. Hey, see, now, oh, again, you, you as much as you off. think you know what that means, you don't know what that means until you've been through something similar. And then you go, oh, my God, how was Tom in a good mood all the time? Cause well, I, you know, I will, I will say this, that the, one of the saving graces was that a lot of times – the actor in the next scene that you're in can help you a lot by coming in with energy. That helps a lot. You know, I was always looking forward to scenes, whether it's with Michael or Kristen or Laura or, you know, Eric, anybody here. Uh, there were maybe a couple people I was like, Ugh, this is a tough one. <laughs> who are okay. name of, who is, who, who were they? Who were they? <laughs> and still is. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> Normally, you, I, I fed off the energy of the person coming in to do the next scene with, because they were like, hey, what's up? I'm here. Michael's like, I've been in my trailer for eight hours, but other than that, let's go. But but funny that you say that because everyone is looking to you for the example. Um, I, I, I'm not kidding when I say that I have often thought of you um, when I was maybe not on my best behavior. I've often been like, well, look, that guy did 22 episodes a year and yeah. he was there every day. And he was I'm glad that you think of me when you're in the depths of you <laughs> bad moods, right? Right. You're but like, yeah, yeah. I use you as I use you as an example to shame myself. If that makes sense. You're like Newman. <laughs> That's funny, Tom. You know when I when I talk to like just different people on on the podcast, like Jensen and uh, Amel, they all go back to talking to you. They're like, I remember when Tom was doing this, and he gave yeah. me advice. I'm like, Tom gave you advice? Yeah, I talked <laughs> to all those guys at one point or another, and because I was a little ahead of most of them season wise and stuff. And yeah, you know, they were like, you know, just ask, how do you do this? How do you do this? And you know what? Good for them to ask. You know what I mean? Because I remember it was like season two or three of, uh, of supernatural and Jensen and Jared are like, we need to go to dinner. We're taking you to dinner. We're paying for it. Let's go. So we go to dinner and they're like, dude, we're working all these nights. How do you, how can we not work nights? I'm like, well, it's called supernatural and it happens at night. <laughs> like, yeah, but we have to shoot at night. I'm like, no, 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 you guys don't get it. Like, you do have to shoot at night. And then they decided, well, we're going to separate each other. And they did a season where they both went in different directions and the ratings went down because people wanted to see them together. Uh, yeah. And they were like, okay. And they, obviously, they've been very successful and they figured it out. But early on, I think that, you know, we're all, whether it's your first day on set or your seventh season, you're always trying to figure out, like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do it better? Um, and I think that's one of the keys to success of, how you know how you do it? I'll, I think you're you're right, but you know what, you, how you do it? You're young. You fucking, you're 25. Oh, yeah. You oh, have the strength to do it. Do it get, get a series <laughs> now in your 40s. Good luck. Oh, and Tom, you know, isn't it true? <laughs> isn't it true you like you would self-drive and you fell asleep at train tracks or something? Like I heard that through the grapevine once. I heard after you all those hours. I heard you die. We wrote a letter. We wrote a letter. Remember? But Tom? it's... Uh, no, you guys, you guys actually saved me. I think John Schneider was behind it. We There was a day where I think I had worked 23 hours and had to drive two hours between one location and halfway through the day, and I was driving home, and John Schneider was in the last scene with me. It was like 4 a.m., and he saw me getting in my car, and he's like, what are you doing? 
He goes, you're driving? He's like, you're not fucking driving. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, he got to the rest of you because contractually I wasn't allowed to have a driver unless everybody yep. did. And you guys sorted out a way where I could actually get someone to drive me to work because of all the hours. Yeah, we all signed it because it wasn't, it was like favor nations for something where they don't yeah. drive uh, Americans in Canada. And we changed that because it did. <laughs> well, no, it, I'm not America. saying it was Canada. I'm just saying in Canada, the rule, whatever, the, the deal they made with us is everybody drove themselves. You're moving there. You're now a citizen of, of Canada for how, whatever. And so that was it. And we're like, Tom is going to die. Our lead yeah. is going to die because he's, <laughs> so we changed the rule. Ultimately, we did. We wrote the letter, and then you know, Tom, uh, they gave Tom a car. They drove. Still here. Awesome. Still here. That's awesome. Thank Still God, here. man. <laughs> Tom, Tom, you're like the uh, you're like the Cal Ripken Jr. Cal Ripken Jr. of uh, acting. There must be a, a, yeah some kind of a long a most amount of games played. Uh, yeah, both both days I didn't show up to work. They uh, they turned the lights out. So I did. It was hey, <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, this way, we're obviously talking about a lot of memories. Um, I want to make sure to get some of the other fans in here. Oh, a lot yeah. of these questions. A lot of these questions. No, I mean it's it's good because a lot of the fans asked for these types of answers. I just want to shout them out. Uh, at Cheshire Cat ninety one says, uh, "Do you have a favorite anecdote to tell about your time filming or a castmate?" We've heard a bunch already. Uh, they say bonus points. The most embarrassing for the more embarrassing. Or heartwarming it is. I want to get um, some of the women uh, in here as well. Uh, Kristen, uh, any uh, favorite anecdotes? <laughs> like, no, it's fine. <laughs> no, that's not it. <laughs> Let the guys talk. We're good. Yeah, we're no. good. We <laughs> anecdotes are fine. hard for me sometimes. I, I, when Alan was talking about kind of it being a blur, some of it, a lot of the early years of Smallville were a blur for me. I was so scared all the time. And so I just, it's like this kind of, blurry mess I just remember reading constantly just sitting in a corner reading books all the time <laughs> blur I remember no, no small were, pun intended I remember no. early on Kristen she would always nail her performances and always be very prepared and, and like told but then we'd move the camera and she'd go to a corner and read I remember people people being like is she okay you think she's okay and it it didn't take very long to realize she's completely fine. Like she's completely fine. Kristen, mm -hmm. did, uh, a, fan, a question that came in with one of our fans, uh, uh, Eldest Damon as well was, what was it, it like being Lana, knowing that Lois in the comics, right, was the eventual love interest of Superman. And they were just curious about how that was, you know, but the, the TV show also made its own choices. You know, Smallville made its own choices about the mythology. So you didn't really know necessarily where it was going. And we had a lot of ups and downs. You were with Lex, you were with, you know, um, just uh, the fan was were curious a little bit about what that experience was like sort of yeah, playing Lana and knowing that Lois was coming. Yeah. It's interesting when people ask questions like that, because it kind of assumes that somehow the woman who ends up with Clark wins or something like that. Mm. And that's not that's not the story yeah. of women's lives. Yeah. yeah. And and I think that if if the show was from Lana's perspective, it was a story about her coming into her own. Yeah. Just like it was about Clark coming into his own. But we're seeing it from his point of view. So there's there's no way to not pull away from the idea that it's about him and who he ends up with and that meaning something. Sure. But ultimately, I think for me, I never thought about it like that. You know, this was a person in her life and he was there and he had a massive impact and she loved him deeply. But in the end, her story went somewhere else. And so you didn't see her anymore, but it didn't mean her story doesn't continue and she doesn't have a full, complete life somewhere where, where Clark doesn't see her or know about her. Yeah, uh, that's a beautiful answer. And I think that was uh, what was cool about seeing your character come back too in those later seasons was like, we remembered like, oh yeah, no, that she's fine <laughs> without Clark. You know what I mean? She's doing okay. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, someone started to say. I mean, we had a bit of a fight on set often about those kinds of things. Really we did, we talked about them a lot. And so, <laughs> no, but yeah. there is a misnomer out there and maybe it happens on some sets. I don't know, maybe there's a, a sense of a, a rivalry or something, but I think that that's just kind of spun out but that's what happens. I, I mean, I didn't sure. experience that um, with Kristen or Laura. <laughs> <laughs> No, and I think, yeah, I think you know, obviously it, yeah. it is from it is from um, Clark Kent's perspective, like you said, Kristen. But I think the women do hold their own. You know what I mean? For sure. A lot of the characters, they come in and especially, Lo I mean, my gosh, Lois, um, again, um, 
comes in as well and is just totally like very flippant towards towards Clark for a majority of the early seasons, you know what I mean? And is very much her own woman. And then obviously um Kara, you know, is 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 one hundred percent um her own woman. I don't know. Um any any reflections on that, Erica and Laura kind of portraying these uh these strong women superheroes really early on in the, in the TV process of it. Obviously we had some, some series in the eighties and things, but these were the first time these characters were really being fleshed out and like given a lot of meat and depth, if you will. You know, it was really, if you don't mind, Erica, um, oh. yeah. it was a really important to me, uh, because we hadn't seen Supergirl on television at that point. We didn't really have, like you said, those female superheroes on television. Yeah. And at the time, I didn't really think much of it. Now I reflect and I'm like, oh, it was a bit of a role model thing for young girls, you know, who I sure. still see at conventions now and now their daughters watch it. But I, I really wish that I had realized at the time that it could have an impact on young women. Um, and I look back at the photos of what they had me wearing. I, I think it could have been done honestly better uh sure. in, in terms of how we portrayed her she came across flippant and um uh bitchy um <laughs> and and in her attire too i just don't think it represented what the character could have been you know we did our best at the time uh but i would have changed some of the things about her i'm, I'm still not to say like so grateful that i played her and it really did help me get into this industry more so especially in the american market but um, yeah, I think, you know, it could have been, she could have been a little more of a role model to young women. Is um, there, yeah. Oh, okay. Erica, sorry. No, no go ahead. No, go ahead. No, no I was just reflect. Up. No, I was just reflecting, <laughs> reflecting on that. <laughs> uh, I came in again partway through and, and so it wasn't the, the usual story of Superman for her to be there. For sure. So what I experienced then from, from more the, the outside perspective, not from the group, because everybody was so nice, was just this, it shook their idea of the mythology. And so then I would get a spillover of, you know, so that's the more superfluous stuff. Like I was like, oh, she's too old for Tom Clark. I look like ancient and I get lots of that stuff. And I was like, fuck you guys. Yeah, and right. then <laughs> like, it would just be all these different things that would happen. But at the end of the day, um, again, I was just this kid that got to play this, this cool human character and she was complicated and fun and she did different things every I just love the stuff that they would give me to do. And I, I, what I liked about that is even though it was contradictory and some of it was like, this doesn't make any sense, but humans don't make sense. And they don't always follow the same line and they, they do yeah. completely opposite to what they say. And, and I, I liked being able to play a character that was like that. Um, so yeah. No, that's awesome. That's awesome. And it's, it's interesting to hear sort of where the characters went. Laura, you specifically said you would have changed this, that, or the other thing. I know this question probably gets asked a lot, um, but if anyone has an, an answer, Mackenzie, Mackenzie Toit is curious for, for the whole panel, if you could rewrite your ending or if there was anything you would have changed about how your characters ended. Um, I don't know. Does anyone else have other sort of things they would have liked to see? Um, I'd like to hear Alan. Alan I wish Aquaman killed everybody. <laughs> I pitched it. I pitched it to the showrunner. Uh, didn't go over well, but I just think it would have been a way better. I mean, he caught with a bang, right? And you know, he's the best superhero. <laughs> he's like not not an old man. <laughs> I can't even joke about him. <laughs> Sam. Just... Sam. Oh God. Um, <laughs> Sam's like character it. tried to kill everybody. Yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah, he, did. he, he did. gave it his all. He gave his. I I remember being. Uh, I remember disagreeing with what they did, but then trying my damnedest to 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 make it work. I, I think it was because I liked Aaron Ashmore so much. The idea of ramming a spike through his chest kind of rubbed me the wrong way. I was like, "What? Yeah. What the Jimmy, Jimmy Olsen? Really? Jimmy? Yeah." But but at the end of the day, you know, that's that's it's not my job to to agree or disagree. It's my job to try to try to make that work. So so yeah yeah. <laughs> Michael, uh, again, the fans are all saying this uh, right now in the chat, uh, greatest and their favorite Lex of all time. You you leave in six or seven, right? And then come back, you know, what were, you, what were your ideas sort of coming back to the series or was there things that you wanted to still do with Lex that you feel like never quite got to? <clears throat> you know, a lot of times, in fact, I just had Kevin Smith on the show and I, I hammered him because I remember he said, you know, he's like, well, you left the show? What do you leave the show? And everybody will always say, 
he left the show, he left the show. That's kind of the feeling because they don't know the whole story. But sure, sure. People don't know that I I was contracted to six years. I signed on for a seventh. I did a seventh and then I was done. I just wanted to go do other stuff. And sure, sure. just like I, I felt like I just had done enough and they had seven years, 22 episodes times seven, 160, whatever it is to get me from good and to, to bad. And I just felt like, hey, that's enough time. Get me there. You have plenty of time. And we had a lot of fun. There were some great episodes, some great moments, some great arcs. Um, and I just felt like that was it. And so, you know, at, for the end, for me to come back, it was a no-brainer. It was like, you know, the, se- the serious finale. I was like, you know, I'm going to come back for an episode. I remember. Let, let, let me just say this for people who don't know this. It was Michael. I mean, they, they wanted Michael to come back every year. But the, and things just didn't line up, and there's things that we probably can't talk about. But when it came to the series finale, Michael's like, I'm in. Yeah. I'm in. So it, he, it was his choice, and I, and I appreciate that. And when he did come back, the scene we had, they did this big crane shot that comes down mm-hmm. over. Like, it's on me. It goes up. It shows a Luther mansion. It's all destroyed, and it goes all the way down. And all of a sudden, Michael walks in, and he goes, Fine! He forgot his line. <laughs> and I'm like, nothing's changed. <laughs> nothing's <laughs> changed. Uh, I remember, I remember, for, for what it's worth, they had, I, I just said, hey, you know, let's do this. I, we got to do this. And it was, I'm telling you, it was a week and a half before, if that. I go, you got me for the following Friday, the whole day. Do whatever you want with me. You got me for one whole day. I'll, I worked 24 hours straight. It was a complete day. Like, I'm telling you, 20. they worked me as much as I could work in that one day, bald cap and all, and I'm claustrophobic, and I have it on video, dude. I am freaking out. Get it off! Get it <laughs> off me! I'm just freaking out. Tom, you do not want that. Have you guys done that mask where it's on your face? It is terrifying. But anyway, so. No, and I think, uh, Michael, to your point, it gives the character more gravitas. You, we saw his arc as it was in Smallville. Lex needs to go off and become the villain he is. And then it was, again, so awesome. And I think it just really added to that finale, uh, the return, you know? So I think it was an awesome decision. I don't think people really hate on it because it was, it was just beautifully done. And, you know, yeah. that's how it goes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was, it, Let, it was a good decision. Let's get to, um, we're, we're, we're running out of time. I just want to remind the fans that uh, if you've got, you know, specific questions for one-on-one, uh, that's what those one-on-one video chats are for. So definitely take advantage of those at wizardworldvirtual.com. They'll be happening some today uh, with Kristen and then the rest of the cast uh, in three days. So whether you're watching this live or later, uh, take advantage of that. But we had not to be outdone by our first fan who had, who sent me uh, like a PowerPoint presentation uh, with all of the questions. Uh, we have this uh, other fan here also sent me a beautiful JPEG uh, with a bunch of questions questions. Um, this is at Brendan Verno, uh, but Luke Greco, E. Gremley 05 asked very similar questions. They're all around, you know, the similar topic about returning to your characters, but not only returning to your characters, returning to really the DC universe. My gosh. And, and Chris, and I hate, I hate to single you out as the only one who didn't come back to a DC film, but you obviously stuck around with the CW and WB, but everyone else, I mean, you either showed up in the crossover. Um, obviously, Michael, you do the voice, voice of the Flash, Erica, Sam, um, Laura, all return in Supergirl. Alan, you're Hawk in Titans, such an awesome series. I, you know, I just, what is it like being a part of, of this super universe and what, 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 I guess, what attracts you and draw, drew you all back. And if you have any like sort of experiences, obviously we don't have a lot of time left to give kind of long stories, but I'd just love to hear a little bit about <laughs> the experience of returning, you know what I mean? To the, to the universe. <laughs> Rapid fire, Alan. <laughs> I like um, it. I, you know, I, I originally, uh, Jeff Johns called me about doing Hawk and I was like, guys, I've already done this. I've mastered the art of superhero. <laughs> and uh, I don't, I don't know if you can talk what I did. <laughs> On the show, it was really it was it was deep and rich and um, no, but you know they they pitched me this idea you know of of, of Hank Hall as like a, a an alcoholic pill pop and vigilante in a very dark gritty world and um, yeah it sounded really cool and it's I wanted to be, I, you know I'm a persona actor so I wanted to play myself um, and uh, you know it's we you know it's it's been fun so it was it was no brainer for me to come back what's that. <laughs> You got all hopped up on goofballs and drinking. Yeah. Like I'm Hawkman. Yeah, it's me. I get strung out on dope before I shoot. It feels it's good. Man. It feels good. <laughs> I get strung out on dope from from uh, dildos to dope with Alan Richardson. Yeah, man. <laughs> it's a biography. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, fan Sam, rapid I, fire. I, I like a microphone. Oh, take it. Um, I'm a, a DC fan. I like I like DC stuff. Uh, and by the way, little little side note about DC stuff. Uh, my buddy Glenn Howerton from Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Uh, He's like, read. I, I got him a Superman thing. It was like that we were doing some research for a project we were working on. And I got him the first issues of Superman uh, all in a sort of a graphic novel format. And I didn't actually read it. And, and he started reading it to his kid. And he calls me up. He's like, dude, dude, the man is not who you think he is. I'm like, what? He's a vengeful lunatic sometimes in, in those early comic books. It's hilarious. Like a friend of his gets hit by a car. So Superman's like, well, I'm going to teach the, the city a lesson about, you know, car safety. And so, you know, he, he like smashes into a radio station, makes an announcement, like literally smashes through the wall, throws the guy in front of the microphone aside. And he's like, I'm going to enforce car safety, guys. And this is Superman. And then suddenly he's like pulling over tra traffic stops and knocking cars over. He goes and wrecks a used car lot for no reason. He's like, these cars aren't fit to be on the road. And he starts tossing them. I'm like... <laughs> you know, his sense of justice uh, doesn't bear a lot of modern day scrutiny. It's amazing. If you guys read the early issues, he he can fly off the handle. You know, it's I very... Always, I always thought that the awesome. biggest fans of superheroes would be construction companies. With all the banging and walls and buildings falling down. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially a man of steel, they destroy a lot of buildings. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Laura, you get to uh, j join Supergirl early on as one of the main villains in the first season as Indigo. Mm -hmm. Again, you know what was that like coming back to the prop? You know, a name that you had been previously associated with. Uh, yeah, it was uh, it was a little odd. Um, I met one of the producers at an event, and he I knew they were doing the show. I had nothing to do with it. Um, but he asked if I would come on the show that the fans like that sort of crossover thing, as we know. And I, I was happy to, cause I've always wanted Supergirl to have her own show. I mean, we tried to do it back then and it wasn't the time or I wasn't sure. right, but to finally see her have a series was great. And I, I wanted to, um, support that. So I, I just said, you know, I'd love to be bad. I'd love to look nothing like myself. Um, and they came up with Indigo, who was entirely blue with pink hair, which was a lot of fun. <laughs> also a Mystique ripoff. We don't need to get into that. Um, I don't know how they got away with it. Uh, but it was, yeah, it was interesting. And like I've said this before on panels and people are sick of it, but I, I, I got the script and started immediately highlighting Kara. You know, it's just, it's still, you see the name and that's you, but it, it's nice to pass on the torch and Melissa's, Great. And like our first scene was a fight. So it was a very odd, nice to meet you. Let's duke this out. Um, but it was, it was good. It was good. And I'm, I'm happy that that show is doing so well. That's awesome. That's awesome. Michael, Michael, talk about uh, your favorite, a favorite voice of the flash among all of the an animated universe fans. Um, no, seriously. I mean, uh, people always talk about what the while you're Wally West and, and you can continue to return in different series and video games and things like that. You know, what's it about the superhero genre that like particularly appeals? to you? I, I, I got to admit, you know, people are always baffled by it. I don't think Tom was either, but I was never a big comic book fan. I, I liked horror movies. I never knew anything about it, which I think helped me to play Lex Luthor. Yeah. Honestly, I just didn't know anything. I was like, all right, I'm just going to say my lines. I'm going to be real. I'll hit my mark. It's not rapid fire. Well, I'm just, but, but for the flash, <laughs> it's funny because I was texting Tom and I'm like, so much for uh, rapid fire, Sam. <laughs> you're welcome. I know I was trying to, I'm warming him up for you because no, I knew you were going to have I'm, I'm kidding around. But, you know, ultimately, look, <laughs> this fell on my lap. Once once you start doing it and they want you back, it's a no brainer. It's like, yeah, of yeah. course, it's like, it's, it's, it's cool, it's money, it's whatever. But it's, all, it's also, I think, there's a, it's like joining a family. I think every. Uh -oh. <laughs> once once they once you've gotten into the door and to the family and they've seen that what you work now you're on that list of people that they go to so it's even better and more yeah successful. you hope so i mean like you there's still so. some stuff i'm like hey they, they cast the flat well not the flash the video he's actually obviously younger and got great legs and can run not that guy <laughs> live action but animation stuff i'm thinking you know there's some stuff i'm like what why, why don't they ask me to do that voice but ultimately, it's it's lucky. It's great. And you get to sit there in a microphone and not shave your beard and have a Sprite and just enjoy yourself. I'm very lucky. I love playing Wally West because he was just like everybody was so serious in the Justice League. And he was the guy who was like, yeah, come on, guys, and just flirting with everybody and having fun. So yeah. it, it was easy and fun. I, I, I'm so surprised that the fans even like 
people come up and ask for an autograph for an animated character. I'm like, really? It's just my voice. But yeah. it's cool. I'm like, wow, it's awesome. That's awesome. Sam, Sam knows about that, Sam. <laughs> um, I, want, I want to talk about Crisis. A lot of fans are asking about Crisis for Tom and Erica. Kristen, though, a follow-up for you, um, and you can think about it for a little bit. Brendan was, was curious, if you could return, or if you did return to a superhero universe, what type of character would you like to play? Obviously, you've stuck around with the CW and WB um, back in the day um, in sort of those fantasy series. But yeah, think about, think about what superhero you'd like to play. Um, but then Tom and Erica, everybody, everybody wants to know um, about... Uh, you know, just returning, obviously, as as Clark and Lois in Crisis. Uh, well, for me, I thought it was fun. And um, and then they said that Erica had agreed to do it. And I was like, <laughs> that makes it even better. Uh, yeah. But All what was right. written, I You're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> what was written, I thought, really made sense to the Clark that was that, uh, that I got to play on Smallville. Um, cool. I had been asked to show up on the Supergirl show, and it, but it, it didn't make any sense. I would I would have been playing a different. It just it, it wouldn't have worked. Yeah. But they were like, no, you're coming back as Clark Kent, but ten years later, and with the, the idea of the family and the idea that this other Lex Luthor, who to me isn't Lex Luthor. I mean, it all just it was. I liked it, and I was. I thought it would be a good way to kind of come back and pay homage to everything that Smallville was a part of. That's awesome, Erica. Uh it was great. I I I found out that I was gonna they called about it when i was on another show and i it, all these guys that work with me know that i kind of have impulse control <laughs> i was in the middle of shooting a scene and i went it's gonna be so much fun and they're like what <laughs> um never mind this is nothing totally love this movie um but, <laughs> but no it ended up being good and it was short and sweet and i like that they still kept a bit of the flavor even within those like few lines, just a bit of the right. flavor of that that relationship instead of kind of launching it into a totally different realm. They kept it fun and light. And I like that. So Yeah, I liked it when I was like, oh, Lex Luthor was just here in some alternate universe thing. And you're just like, oh, you my little my little munchkin. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> He's learning some things. Yeah. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah, that's so awesome. And um, Marina Niwa follows up, Tom, for you what, uh, with what was your favorite farm chore to do? But that was a funny, specific question. Favorite farm chore? As, as Bro, uh, throwing the tractor. When I was oh. with Jonathan and, we, and the, the tractor, he was trying to help me lift the tractor. And I threw it. That was, that was fun. <laughs> I just thought it was like a random, a random question that came through. I thought it was fun. I thought it was for me, like my real life, because I did work on a farm when I was like, oh. <laughs> Most of the chores weren't super fun. Singing poo is not great, but we had to do it. I call them chores. <laughs> truth, truth. Kristen, um, again, a uh, fan followed up just, you know, yeah, checking in. You've had time to think about it. What what yeah. would you love to, like, return to or do uh, in the future? In the Honestly, I miss, I miss fighting. I really love doing fight scenes. I'm on a straight drama right now, and I, 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 I love it. But I don't get to kick anybody, and I miss kicking people. <laughs> and you're so good at it too. You're you're so athletic. You're really good at that stuff. Yeah, all the karate and gymnastics training. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That was something awesome. that was really great about Smallville, though. Like you would have, you get to fight, then you get to have some fun, and mm -hmm. you'd have a couple of serious things. So any of us who have gone on afterward and done like a show that's like same more serious, I remember reflecting back on that when I was doing Saving Hope, and I was like okay, I'm just tired of crying. Like, this is way too heavy. I'm so depressed, like, all the time. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you got a little variety of stuff to do, which I liked. Oh, yeah. I mean, the variety was amazing. That was the best part of the show. Not only did we get the action that we were looking for, but then we also got the character building that was needed and that made it so awesome. And again, I mean, people have said this before. I'm not the first person to say it, but Smallville set the bar for what is TV today, um, especially specifically superhero shows, but just I think even just like dramas in general, you know what I mean, that have any sort of supernatural element or sci-fi or fantasy element. Um, really, it was about the characters and, and how they became the, the people that we knew them to be and about the choices they made. So uh, such, such an awesome series that um, I, I've been binging again. I know fans are binging again. I know people are discovering for the first time. So on behalf of all the fans watching all over the world, I just want to say thank you, not only for, for doing this show, but for being here today. This is very important uh, for a lot of people. That ever, it's a nice break from sort of the reality that we're living in um, to reflect back on our favorite fan series. So again, we really appreciate it. And thank you. And I'd love to just 
pop around the room, rapid fire now, uh, take your time, but I'd love to just pop, <laughs> pop around the room one more time and just, you know, any final words? A lot of fans are asking about any upcoming projects that they can see you in or where they can find you. Um, shout out to a lot of our fans we didn't get to, Danny in Canada, Josh MC, Becca Wan, Eluza JPEG, uh, Tim Walker. Um, a lot of them ask similar questions about, you know, where, where can we see you, things you have upcoming, and then any final shout outs to the fans. Let's start with uh, the gentleman, Alan. Oh man, thanks. Uh, Titan season three. Yep. Um, and uh, yeah, we're, yeah, we're heading up to uh, quarantine soon. So looking forward to that. And thanks for having me. It's uh, it, it was always humbling on the show, you know, being on the show with you guys started my career with you guys. And uh, it's really nice kind of coming full circle. I appreciate you having me on. Awesome. Thanks, Alan. Thanks for being here. Sam. Yeah, it was a really good experience. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, and uh, look back fondly. So <laughs> it's good to be here. Very cool. Thanks, Sam. DJ Sexy Lexi? What? <laughs> <laughs> Shout that out to the, the fans. Answer. That was his answer. Shout out to the fans? Yeah. And tell us uh, about Inside of You. When's the next Inside of You coming out? Uh, every what Tuesday, we got, we got a big uh, big announcement coming up in the next week or two, and just great guests. Uh, you know, Kristen's coming up, and yeah. who else? Kevin Smith, Dax Shepard, Jensen Ackles. Very exciting. Love it. Just writing a lot of stuff, pitching a new show and just trying to enjoy life as best we can right now and be safe, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. Without you guys, we honestly, you hear it, it's cliche, but it's not. It's real. We wouldn't be here. Yeah. So that's just, that's just awesome. Just so. Awesome. Thanks, Michael. Tom? Uh, exactly what Michael said. Um, I also, the shout out to the fans whose uh, questions didn't get answered. I just picture them all being like, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> Wouldn't be here without you and just hang in there. Hopefully we can do some live events soon and or do more of these. This is a lot of fun. And thanks for Alan and Sam for joining. It's a fun Yay. to see you guys. Yeah, that was awesome. Alan, Sam. Awesome, dude. Thanks, guys. Yay. Yeah, we awesome. Laura? Uh gosh, yes. Um uh, <laughs> thank you guys for always tuning into this stuff. And yeah, hopefully, like Tom said, we can do this again live in the near future. Um, yes. but and yeah, sorry if we didn't get to your questions, but uh, you can always hit us up on social media if you have direct questions. I can't guarantee some of these people will answer, Tom. Uh, but we are there. <laughs> so, we are uh, there. And, I don't really like social media. Here, I know, I know. Uh, but yeah, just trying to... I'm in quarantine day five right now in Canada. Oh. It sucks. Um, so this is my world for the next, you know, forever. Uh, but I'm developing and, and starting a new project in September, a new, sh a new show. Well, not a new show, but I'm joining a show. So I'm very excited about that. Yay. Awesome. Yeah. 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 We're looking forward Thanks. to all of your work. Awesome. Erica. <laughs> I just, hi everybody. Thanks. This was super cool. Be safe. Everybody. Enjoy your families. And I'm working on some things and uh, we'll see if they come to light. <laughs> I'll be out there doing something. <laughs> Bye. Very cool. Thanks. And last but not least, Kristen. Um, thank you guys so much. I, we've, I, I'm amazed that you guys still want to hear us talk about this show. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I appreciate it so much. It's been a joy doing this and kind of sort of getting to know you guys, um, through the one-on-ones and through, through everything. So I'm, I'm endlessly grateful. I am here in Winnipeg about to start, um, our fourth season of Burden of Truth. So yeah. I'm really looking forward to that. I'm terrified also, but it should be fun. <laughs> you know what sucks, Mike? Mike, you know what sucks about this whole panel? What's up? Because before when it was just me and Tom, I was the second best looking guy or third best looking guy. Now you bring in Alan and Sam and I'm just at the <laughs> point. I just I can't. We're going to have to have a conversation about this. We can split it up next time. We can just do a solo panel, Michael, and it'll just be. <laughs> or, or if I can get Alan's camera and his hair and. Skin. That's easy. What I can't get is that sweet Mike beard. I can't do that. That would take four, four or five years, I think. Well, I'm older than you. What are you, 36? 37. We don't have to talk about that. We're getting <laughs> we're, uh, we're moving on up in age there. <laughs> let's let's get out of here. Uh, hey, quick, quick, that was I, I appreciate you all shouting out to the fans whose questions we're going to get. I want to say their names because uh, they're, they're awesome. They all submitted. Oh. Kelly Eleven Marie, John Costello, um, Kathy Pineda, Leanne Pritchett. Uh, who else do I have? Absolutely Matt. Tame the Fro. Uh, I got Cheshire Cat. I think that's it. Those are the ones we missed. So I uh, appreciate you all for submitting your questions. If I missed your name, uh, apologies. Yay, puppies, puppies. It's always a good end to the panel when the puppy makes it into the, <laughs> the shot. Uh, we appreciate all for being here. 
Let's give one more big <laughs> round of emojis to the amazing Ooh, cast hi, of Smallville. Let's hear once again Alan Richson, Sam Whitworth, Laura Vandervoort, Eric Durance, Michael Rosenbaum, Kristen Crook, and Tom Welling, everybody. Thanks, guys. That was awesome. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Hi, this is Aaron Ashmore, and you are watching Phantom Spotlight. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe like, like now. Oh, and have fun and follow your fandom.